All right, welcome to Edge Show number 79. It is a very special time here at Microsoft, uh, October 18th, the launch release day, general availability of a couple of our major products here, uh, one of those being Windows Client 8.1. So uh, we have quite a few links here on resources for you as IT professionals on how to get prepared for this new release of our products. Uh, one is the eval center. So certainly check out the eval center for Windows 8.1 Enterprise eval. Uh, and we also have a new free ebook. There is a free ebook for your IT pros out there on 8.1. We've packed a ton of new stuff into 8.1 for manageability. Uh, making things uh, easier to use with Windows 8.1, configuring those things with group policy, such as the start button, uh, boot to desktop, a lot of cool stuff there. So check the free ebook out. And of course, we have the Cloud OS Eval Center, uh, which includes our Windows Server 2012 R2 product, our System Center 2012 R2 products, uh, and SQL Server 2014. Uh, those are available for you to download today. We also have, for readiness, that's kind of the bits side of the house, we also have uh, a couple Microsoft Virtual Academy courses that are up and online right now. One of those is What's New in System Center 2012 R2 uh, Jumpstart course with uh, my colleague Simon Perryman, a uh, regular uh, guy you know from the Edge Show here. Uh, so check out that course uh, for, you know, getting yourself uh, familiar with what's new there. And we also have another course from my other colleague, uh, Rick Claus, which is what's new in Windows Server 2012 R2. So check those MVA courses out to have a guided learning experience uh, on our new products. So with that, uh, I am going to now hand off to uh, Adam Carter, <laughs> my former colleague, on uh, some cool stuff with Microsoft's uh, remote desktop client, uh, which is now uh, uh, available in even non-Microsoft places. So check it out. All right, we are here. Welcome, Adam, back again. You guys can't get rid of me. I miss I, it too much over here. I know, you do, and I hear there's some new goodness going on in your world. What, what do you have for us today? Yeah, this is pretty exciting stuff. You know, I, I left Edge about two years ago, became the VDI product manager, mm -hmm. and in those two years, every presentation I've done, can be around a boardroom uh, with a, a group of customers, it can be at a, a big event like TechEd, Every time I do a VDI presentation, there's one question I know I'm going to get that I always get. When are you guys going to do an iPad client? Okay, well, well when are you going to do an iPad Funny client? Funny you should <laughs> ask. What we're announcing today with the general availability of Windows 8.1 and R2, we are releasing in the app stores for iOS, Mac OS, and Android. We've got an application now. We've got a remote desktop client. Uh, you know, Use it to connect in, access your remote desktop servers, access VDI, connect to your own PC if you want remotely with uh, with RDP you can use your iPad now as a client Wow wow that's pretty cool no more no more going to the third-party apps there huh what what uh, what is that what is that buying us man what are we what, what are we getting into here well I mean it's really just giving us a full solution out of the box there's still some great partners they're still doing some great mm -hmm. stuff on top of it but for people that uh, you know want to want an easy to easy to drop in solution all from one vendor we're delivering it now Okay, cool. Well, I mean, why don't we just dig in and see what this thing looks like Wanna here? Take a look? You know, yeah. All right. So here we have my my iPad. Um, this is my personal iPad. There's all kinds of stuff on here, but notice we've got the remote desktop client icon. Let me fire it up and show you what the experience looks like. So we've got a couple of options here. At the top, you can see I can connect into just remote desktops. If I know my machine name, I just want to connect to my own PC. I can do that the here. The real power comes, though, when you've got uh, an RDS deployment that your administration has done, and they've published out specific applications and, and made those applications and desktops available to you. And we can configure all that down here. Let me show you what that looks like. I've already started filling out some of the information. Uh, the server name, administrator just needs to give the user that server name. You don't need mm -hmm. the rest of the URL stuff on there. The, the application will actually find and fill in for you. So all you need is the server name, and then, of course, your uh, domain credentials and password. Paste that in instead of giving away all my secrets today. So when I save that, now it's gone out, it's grabbed the feed from that server and it's seen this whole list of applications that are published to me. You can see I've got all the op office applications available and we've also got a, a full desktop down here we can connect to as well. 
So let me show you a little bit of what the experience looks like, right? Yeah. Let's I'll see just it. fire up uh, Excel. Connects in here pretty quickly. I already had some other stuff running in the background. But uh, this is Excel running on my iPad. It's actually running on an RDS server in a data center across campus here. Cool. But it's delivering the screens to me. So there's a couple of challenges when you're dealing with a device like yep. this, right? One of them is, I don't have a keyboard. Yeah. How do I make it easy to get to the keyboard? So we made that one click away right here on the, uh, the top bar. I've got the keyboard right here. Pretty easy to, to access and use. Put in a, a little plug here for the stuff I work on. Windows Server 2012 R2, okay. available by the time you read this. Go, go download the email. That's right. So we made the keyboard easy to get to. Okay. We also fully support touch applications. So Office 2013 is fully enabled to run great on Windows 8. It means we get a great touch experience. That means I can zoom with just a couple of fingers. I can scroll with my fingers. Uh, I can pinch here to, to shrink things down. Mm -hmm. Make it really easy to work that way. The other challenge you have when you're using an application that was designed with a keyboard and mouse in mind, sometimes you get some really tiny menu items that are hard to reach here. It's like if I'm trying to hit this little pull down arrow next to delete, you know, I, I, I missed it there, I, mm -hmm. I, I hit under it there. So we have this, uh, this zoom mode that I can bring up. If I just hit this uh, zoom icon that's also up here on the connection bar, zooms me right in, makes it easy for me to, uh, to hit those smaller icons hit that delete button that I was trying to get to before. Okay. Now, there were other applications that were published. If I just tap up here on this connection bar, I can bring up that list of other applications that were mm -hmm. available to me. Fire up calculator, for example. It's always a favorite. I mean, you, you got to have calculator at your fingertips <laughs> whenever you need it, right? <laughs> it's like, you, there's a calculator built into iOS, Adam. Why do you always demo bringing a calculator? I don't know, because it's, it's an easy one that's small and easy to bring up. We can also switch between applications that are already running so if you, if you were paying close attention when I fired it up, you saw that the browser was already here in the background, already had uh, one of my favorite YouTube apps playing, or one of my favorite. Uh, oh no, here we go again. Yeah. Yes. This is an RDP session. So here we are on an iPad, on wireless, playing video, playing YouTube video. And notice, you know, it's YouTube, right? So that's a Flash application running on my iPad remotely. There we go, very cool. So, oh snap, oh, snap. that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> um, now we, we're showing some applications here. We can show the desktop experience too. Let me disconnect from there and we'll just fire up a full desktop. So again, this is an RDS server that's running. Again, full Windows support. We can pinch, we can zoom. We can bring up that list of full applications by scrolling from the bottom there. What about like the, the charms and some of the other stuff like the Windows 8? Eight specific shortcuts. Yeah, yeah, all this, all the, the Windows 8 gestures work. I can swipe in from the side here to bring up my charms and get back to my start button or anything like that. Okay. Um, and hey, look, you know, we're, we're browsing the desktop. I'm accessing a Windows desktop from my iOS device. The other thing we can do, we talked about the zoom mode and, and some of the touch stuff. If you've got an application that really just wants to work better with a mouse, we can switch the mouse mode here. See this icon in the top left that's, uh, that's the multi-touch icon? or the loser icon, I guess. I don't know what that is. Uh, if I tap that, we're switched into trackpad mode. And now what that's done is the whole screen of my, of my iPad here has become a trackpad that I can use to move that mouse around. So I can really target in something specific that I'm trying to get to, for example, if I'm okay. launching applications and things. So for, for Mac users, they'll, they'll like that. You know, with the, yeah. with the, it almost acts like a big Mac trackpad, right? Yeah, you know, and if, and if you've got the iOS, or sorry, if you've got the Mac OS RDP client, mm -hmm. you know, we've got full support for remote app there. So you've got some applications that are Windows apps running as, as remote apps. You've got some that you're running locally on your Mac. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the Windows interact with each other just the way you'd expect local Windows to do. Yeah. Just the Windows ones will, you know, they'll have the Windows minimize and maximize buttons in the corner instead of the Mac ones. Yeah, Because they're, they're remote apps. Okay. But uh, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Yeah. I'm showing iOS today. We've got Mac OS coming. We've yeah. also got Android applications. Okay. Google Play Store, App Store for iOS or, or Mac OS. Go download them. They're free. Go grab them. Cool, yeah. So that, that, that tells us where all the clients are at. What about the back end? So what do we support as far as what we're connecting up to? Okay. Yeah. What we've tested yeah. is basically the stuff that, that is we're supporting today. So Windows Server 2012, 2012 R2, 2008 R2. Um, we support uh, Windows 8, 8.1, Windows 7, Windows XP, Service Pack 3. We've tested back that far. You can connect to all of those. They work. Um, 
obviously the Windows 8 RDP improvements you only get on a system that's running right. Windows that's got those. Right. Um, it should connect to older systems as well. We just didn't test any further back than what we currently support. But if you've got 2,000 terminal servers kicking around, should still work. It's all still RDP under okay. the covers. Okay. So I mean, I know that I, uh, we got to have at least one little little nugget in here for our two VDI stuff, right? I mean, it is it is launch day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so what what are some of the the cool you know enhancements for? using 2012 R2 for your VDI backend solution. Yeah. There's, a, there's a couple of things that are new in R2. Yeah. Um, one is, you know, because we build on top of Hyper-V, all the cool improvements in Hyper-V and, and in Windows Server we get to bring along. So a couple of new features in Windows Server for storage pools. One is storage tiering. And that's where I can take a couple of different types of disks, a solid state disk and maybe a spinning disk, put them together as one storage pool. So it looks like one piece of, one, one volume. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the operating system automatically takes care of what are the bits being accessed the most, and let's put those on that faster disk. Mm -hmm. So it's completely transparent to, the, to an administrator. When, normally when you set up VDI, you really got to think about, here's my gold image, it's going to have all the I.O. and all the boot traffic, so I'm going to put that on a really fast disk. Here's my user files, I'll, I'll put them on this, this share over here that's a little bit slower disks. Here's all the, the differencing disks that get created when they log into VDI. We'll put those on this middle-ish high-speed spinning disks. Mm -hmm. We take all that work out of you with storage tiering. Just put all those disks into one volume, mm -hmm. tell VDI to use that, It'll, and the operating system takes care of optimizing what's getting access the most. The other thing that's really cool... So, so with that one though, right, mm -hmm. I mean, that's going to be a big one to save people a lot of money on, on being able to scale a lot higher, right? So if they want to put a higher density per server uh, rollout, right? Yeah, Yeah, I, and, and again, reducing the cost. You don't have to go out and buy a big SAN mm -hmm. to do VDI. Mm -hmm. If you've got one and you want to use it, that's fine. We mm -hmm. leverage that that's yeah. just great. Yeah. But uh, you can save a lot of money potentially by just using yeah. some local disks and, and a file server with plus, that data. Plus data dedupe right now. So and you combine that with mm -hmm. that, you get some extra uh, yeah. goodness, right? Data dedupe is the is a really big one for VDI. Um, and basically that's the idea that if you've got VDI, you know, you've got a bunch of Windows installations and virtual machines all sitting on the same disk. Mm -hmm. And those all have the same Windows core files in them. They probably mm -hmm. have the same core office files in them. There's a lot of redundancy in that data. Disk dedupe will just automatically, in the background, look at all of those, find all that redundant data, and just keep one copy of all those blocks. And we're seeing some huge cost savings with that. 80% reduction in, uh, in the amount of space taken up by your VMs. Wow when you're using wow. BDI. Combine that and put that, that's 80% savings on an SSD, it's like a winning combo right there. Yeah, suddenly yeah. you can you know yeah. host a lot more on an SSD yeah. than you could cool. before. Wow. Um, you also get some performance improvements with disk dedupe because we do do some caching of those common blocks. Mm -hmm. So you, you're getting, you're reducing the storage space, you're getting a performance boost for free along with it. Nice. So those are big things. A um, couple of changes in, in how we, in remote app behavior, mm -hmm. I guess we'll, is what we'll say. Uh, you know, remote apps look pretty much like a local application. We improved that even further if you've got windows with transparency and they're transparent now, they're not just black boxes. Um, the thumbnails, previews that you get of an icon down on the, on the taskbar, you used, to, you used to get just a generic remote app icon, now mm -hmm. you actually get the real thumbnail there for remote okay. apps. Okay. So uh, some other kind of cool improvements there. Also support for dynamic resolution shifting. Okay. So if you've ever had a remote desktop session and then plugged in a second monitor, rotated your device, plugged into a projector and the resolution changed, cool. suddenly you had all these scroll bars on your remote okay. desktop sessions. We dynamically will change the resolution in the remote session now too. Can you show me that working here? No, because this is a landscape only. The, okay. This application doesn't rotate. But if we had a Surface, we did the same demo from a Surface, I could show you that. Okay. All right, awesome, Adam. This has been uh, pretty sweet to, to check out the new enhancements there. Where can people go to get more info? So go to Microsoft.com slash Windows Server. And from there, you'll see the links to uh, my VDI pages and find all the uh, information we've got out there, data sheets, white papers, deployment guidance on how to get a Microsoft Server 2012 R2 VDI deployment up and running. And also, go to the app stores, Google Play, iOS App Store, Mac OS App Store, search for the Microsoft Remote Desktop app. There you go. Download it and uh, take your Windows desktop with you everywhere, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And uh, if you have comments, questions, feedbacks, just post them here on uh, the thread to this video. Cool. Looking forward to hearing feedback. We're excited about it. I hope other people are too. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, David. All right. Uh, I hope you liked that interview there, uh, showing off the Microsoft Remote Desktop client uh, with Adam. And if you have any questions related to that, spe that interview specifically, make sure you comment on the interview down below. 
But also, big announcement for Edshow in general is that we now have a Windows 8 app. You'll notice right behind me, here we go, uh, there is our Windows 8 application which enables you to download videos offline. And uh, also, a uh, thing that's one of my favorites is the fact that you have the ability to do a different speed for watching interviews. Now, I know that that you all want to watch us at 1x speed, but, but uh, sometimes it is nicer to kind of get through the interviews to, to speed them up, so we, we enable that. We realize there's a lot of folks like even myself uh, that would like to watch those quicker, so that's one of our, one of our features there. Um, and it's really good, right, especially if you have RT devices to be able to, to download it and, and consume uh, our, our videos offline. So definitely go download the Edge Show app. It is aka.ms forward slash Edge app. And uh, with that, you know, feel free to contact us, uh, you know, on edge at microsoft.com, send us a tweet at TN Edge, uh, or join our Facebook page. And stay tuned for next week.